Good morning, Year 5. This is your Friday's English lesson, and we're going to carry on from where we left off yesterday, writing our third paragraph, all about Howard Carter entering the antechamber. So the success criteria is pretty similar to yesterday. We are going to do our show not tell, so all about how Howard is thinking, how he's feeling as he enters such an amazing treasure of wonders. So he's gone through the passageway, he's broke down the wall, and now finally he has arrived in the antechamber of treasures. We're going to use those high level verbs, we're going to use definitely the five senses, that is the main theme this week that I know what he is thinking, I know what he's seeing, what he's touching, what he's hearing, what he's smelling, and even if he can taste anything in the air. And finally, we are going to do a lot of preposition today, because this antechamber is so big, I want to know exactly where Howard is looking and where all the treasures are in the room. So overall, we are going to write our third paragraph. We're going to create suspense. Is that what is that what is our narrative is all about this week? as we want our readers to just keep reading on to see what happens next as he enters and he goes deeper through the tomb. Um, and we're going to use descriptive language to help the reader really imagine the treasures he finds within the antechamber today. So this is a small cartoon that I found online about what an antechamber may look like. In Tutankhamun's tomb, over 3,000 pieces of gold and jewels and lots of treasures were found. So as you can imagine, it's jam-packed with artifacts. So there's a small picture here showing the chariot at the bottom. We've got some tapestry, we've got some statues, we've got a chest, we've got some more statues over here in the corner. Um, over here we've got some maybe chairs and tables but me saying over here isn't very clear is it so I definitely need those prepositions at the back underneath in the corner at the back right hand side next to and that's really going to help so I want you to pause the video here write down a few ideas of what you think he can see also referring back to your plan what he can see in the antechamber and then finally you're going to put some next to it some descriptive words and where it would be in your chamber. Okay, so I've wrote a model text about this third paragraph and I want you to have a read through of it, see what you like about it, you can magpie some words, some ideas that I've seen, that I've put in, maybe you can do a little five senses bubble map about what he can hear, what he can smell, and read in this model text, think about the kind of level that I want from you about all those things in the success criteria and what ideas you really like. So even here in the middle, I've put he surveyed his surroundings. That's a short, snappy sentence. So I know that will create a little bit of suspense. I haven't got any ellipsis in there, but I have got a few short, snappy sentences. And I've also got definitely my five senses to get my um, reader immersed into my paragraph. So have a read through, pick out some ideas that you like, you can copy them down, some words, some phrases, and then they can be used and magpied in your own paragraph. So here again, I have my same paragraph that you've just seen on my model text, but I've got my success criteria that is down here at the bottom, and then my extension criteria at the bottom as well, which is creating suspense to add some similes, some personification, which is a little bit of an extension to really immerse and put my figurative language into my paragraph. So as you can see, I've colour coded it to make sure that I have put everything in my paragraph, which is expected of me. So prepositions is a massive one in this paragraph. They're all over the place because I need to know where the things are in the antechamber. The antechamber is probably about the size of our classroom, maybe a little bit bigger. So it is huge. It's got chariots, it's got treasure chests, it's got things scattered all over it. But remember, it has been there for thousands of years as well. So there's probably cobwebs, there's probably some maybe some snakes, there might be some spiders. So there's lots of things to think about that would be inside. I've got a relative clause in the purple. I've got two in there, so I've got an a clause that doesn't make sense on its own, a subordinating clause, but it makes it a relative clause by adding a W word. So, which had once sat proudly on the crown of a king does not make sense on its own, but when added to the main clause, it creates a good sentence. I have got some adverbs of manner 
Remember, they don't always have to end in L-Y. It tells me how. So he gently did something. He slowly did something. He carefully did it. But then I've also got two which don't end, end in L-Y. So steadying himself. That tells me how he's moving and how he's doing something. So again, you can steal a, a few of mine or you can think of some on your own. I've got my five senses which are riddled in this paragraph all about what he can touch, what he can feel, what he can see is the massive one because you imagine Howard Carter's eyes darting from corner to corner as he's so amazed and overexcited and overjoyed with what he can see in front of him. It's blew his mind. He's never seen an antechamber like this. And remember that this one is untouched. No one has ever been there before. So no tomb robbers have ever found it. And that's why it's so exciting because nothing has been stolen. Nothing has been touched since the day Tutankhamun died and it was sealed. So this is an overwhelming experience for him. We've got the powerful verbs and expanded noun phrases, which has been in the whole week as well. So expanded noun phrases with our two adjectives to describe our noun, which gives us a little bit more detail. And our powerful verbs is a year five adjective to really think about a theosaurus that we could steal some words and just up level our writing. So he didn't look, he glanced, he didn't move, he pulled it. He didn't um, look around, he glanced at it, he didn't walk, he strolled or he carefully tiptoed. So we're just up-leveling our doing words and that makes it a lot more enticing for the reader to imagine. So finally, it's your turn now to start writing. We're doing our third paragraph. Again, you can flick through this video, you can pause it on my model text to magpie, you can take a look at the success criteria, just keep flicking through the video and pausing whilst you are reading yours and writing yours to really remind yourself what is expected and what I want in your paragraph. Again, I want you to read it through, you can add more detail, make sure you're not missing any words out. Remember it's in third person as well, so Howard Carter needs capital letters because it is a name. So the more detail, the better. Don't forget we're creating suspense as well as it's going to run up to next week when something dramatic happens in our story. So we're still creating that eerie kind of scary vibe for our audience that we want them to keep reading on to see what happens. Lots of scary language, lots of eerie vibes, so the spiders are there, it's dark, it might be gloomy, it might be a bit smelly, and all of that keeps the reader on the edge of their seats. So take a picture, send it in, and we can't wait to read it. Good luck, year five.